In reaction to reports of continued attacks by headsmen in Delta, Imo, Anambra and other parts of the South, South and the Southeast regions of Nigeria, the movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra Masab has told the people of the regions to protect themselves against attacks from headsmen in their area. The movement went further to state that the continued attacks signaled the inexistence of security agenda of the region's governors. I still have with me Lulu Elegbe, public affairs analyst. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you. And joining us via telephone is a security expert, Onyekachi Adekoya. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me and good evening to the viewers. Yeah, good evening. All right. <coughs> Self-defense, Masab, do they have the right to be making such calls? Well, everyone has the right to defend themselves, first of all. And I think when you tell people to defend yourselves, it's, it's almost, no, no, admission is the wrong word. It's, I think it points to the fact that the state has failed in that regard because the primary responsibility of any government is protection of lives and property of the citizens. So when citizens are calling on each other to defend each other from um, security situation or attacks and those sorts of things, it points to the fact that the government has failed in its number one responsibility and all you need to do, and this is not, it's not a political, it's not an APC, PDP thing. The reality is that too many Nigerians are being killed and too many Nigerians are being attacked without consequence. So when, um, whether it's Masob or any other group calls on um, people from their region of the country to defend themselves against this, these attacks, um, it's, it's, it was always going to happen. I'm not, it's not, there's nothing surprising about it. Oh, yeah, Kachi, let, me, let me come to you with the question. Um, this is not the first time we're hearing defend yourself, defend yourself. Um, not so long ago, we had a former uh, chief of staff, that's uh, Theophilus Danjuma. Um, he, sometime in March 2018, also made the same call, alluding that um, the people that are supposed to be taking care of our security are not doing so, so we should take care of ourselves. So with this call from a sub, and considering the fact that they are alleging uh, that so much is going on in the region that's been ignored, what's your position? Well, my, my position is, would just be that um, everyone has a right to enjoy his property with peace. Um, so the right to self-defense is enshrined in the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria, but that right also has its limits. Uh, but I guess what the call um, seeks to address is it's more or less calling people to a collaborative approach towards security. Uh, more so when you look at the state of unrest, in that region, Enugu, Delta, the fact is the number of incidences that are happening that uh, perhaps is giving people some source of concern. Uh, so, some are arguing so, that, uh, just sorry to interrupt, but some are arguing that yeah. this might be an exaggeration of what is truly uh, the reality on the ground when it comes to attacks by um, alleged headsmen or bandits. From your position mm -hmm. as a security consultant, uh, do you think that there is some truth to the assertion that bandits are taking over these states already mentioned, Delta, um, Anam uh, Imo, Anambra, and other parts? Well, there's, 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 there's some problem there. My mom is from Abia State, for example. I'm married to someone from Delta. Um, Delta, I go to the specific, and I travel this country every now and then. We also glean information off of open media um, that, and the report suggests that there's, a, there's been an uptick in the last five years in the incidents of um, headers, reported full and clashes, kidnapping, people unable to go to their farms. And, you know, the, the host communities are becoming a bit more restive. So, I mean, it's, it's, it, someone once said, if you don't raise dust, people won't raise eyebrows. 
Uh, so there, there's, there's cause for concern, genuine cause for concern. If you travel to these remote communities, particularly around Enobu and Delta, uh, I think the problem is getting to an alarming um, stage. So there's cause for that call for people to join hands with their neighbors to help address the issue of insecurity, whichever way best they can, as long as they are within the limit of the law. Okay, um, Lulu, let me, is it possible that um, the leaders of the South, is, as is being accused uh, by Masop now, may be unintentionally, including the federal government, neglecting these issues that um, Onyekachi is saying is possibly happening in these parts that is not the North East. Are we neglecting this area because of the focus um, on insurgency and headsmen in other parts? Well, yes, because um, the military, the security service general, the security services generally is quite, the, our security services are stretched, let's be fair. Um, yes, there is a lot of focus on the Northeast for obvious reasons. But at the same time, um, the fact that th these attacks in other parts of the country are not new. They are not a year, they are not two years old. They've, They've been going on for a while now, and they've only got, I think, uh, they've only gotten worse as we've, as we've um, gone on. So there has to be, I would assume, there would be certain conversations had in certain circles within the government, within the security services of the country, on how to address this. Because you can't, um, you can't say because we're focused on one side, we're going to ignore what's happening on the other side. I can understand being stretched. I can understand that the security services cannot be everywhere at the same time. That's, I, I get that. But when you have attacks happening on the scale that we're talking about, I mean, we hear these stories all the time. So it's, it's, that is worrying enough. But I think the, the, on the flip side, when you have, um, I mean, even forget about mass up. When, when you have people waking up one day and saying, you know what, we're going to defend ourselves because the security services are not doing that. It's a slippery slope because then you, it opens the door to all sorts of things, to jungle justice, um, to people killing um, without, without, without due pro it opens the door to all sorts of things. Uh, well, we, we do have Amoteko at yeah. the moment, um, and this is an effort of uh, state governors. Yeah. Um, he is saying, mm. we do know also that the South, the Southeast, they are already talking about creating their own security um, outfit, but Masob is saying that there is no seriousness mm. um, in the effort. Isn't he being hasty? I I'll come to you, Onyekachi. Isn't he being hasty, or rather, isn't the group being hasty Considering the fact that when Amoteku was announced, there were issues, controversies around it. One was the issue of legitimacy. It had to go through uh, the, the houses of assemblies to get its legitimacy. So isn't he being hasty when he accuses the Southeast governors of not uh, being uh, sincere? Hello, do we have you on the line, Onyekachi? Oh, no, 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 I thought you were asking, speaking, so... Uh, no, I was actually um, taking the question to you. Did you get it? Yes, I got the question. Okay. There's no haste. Um, there's no haste. There's an adage in um, Yoruba language that says, Be no bad journey, don't jump any. Please translate yeah. that for us. <laughs> so what it means is that if, if you, for example, there's a fire, and the fire is burning you and your child, you first take care of yourself before you get to the child. So it's a, there's a sense of urgency. And even from the outside, we don't get the sense that there's a sense of cohesion amongst the Southeast governors. And again, it's um, something innate within the people from my mother's side. Uh, they, 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 can, they hardly agree on issues. So I think... The political divide, you have APGA, you have uh, APC, PDP within that uh, axis, and they're finding it difficult to agree on a best approach. But if you talk about Amoteko, Amoteko is a, is a child of necessity. Um, and of course, there were issues of law, 
Uh, it, 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 it's also for. about self-protection. Community policing is part of protecting yourself, is it not? It, it, it's about self-preservation. It's about uh, self-protection, yes, but you must look at the source of risk. Desertification, climate change, farming in Niger, in Chad, the Lake Chad Basin drying up. Uh, these incursions would only continue. And I was listening to Senator Kwaramadu speak the other day on, on um, one of his TV stations, and he said, by his own estimations, he doesn't see this issue going away anytime soon. So he's proposed a state police, he's proposing a state police uh, bill to bring policing down to the people. So, I mean, at the crux of this whole matter is people are dying. We have become norm to people dying. Um, the, the, there is... Is... Okay, finish your thought, finish your thought. So it's, it's five today, it's 20, tomorrow is 30, you know, and people don't have a sense that these are human lives. So I agree with the, the, the guest there that it's indicative of a failure of governance and a failure of leadership on the part of the Saudi governor to not uh, be dealing with the, the issues with this level of seriousness that it requires at this time. Okay, I, I was going to uh, ask you um, a submission that was made by Mossab. Um, they, they were talking about making reference to the Niger Delta militant groups, men. Now, this is time for them to wake up. Considering that these were militant group and there is no similarity um, with Amo the likes of Amote Kung as we have them now, isn't that, um, you know, working at cross purpose of protecting the people? Because we know that these groups, oh, let me come to you instead. Uh, we know that these groups have a tendency to cause mayhem. Yeah, so that, so that, that goes to the point I made earlier about... Um, this opening the doors to other things that we really don't want. So whether it's Masob, whether it's IPOB or any of these groups, um, we all know what their agenda is or their agendas are. And the reality is when, the gov when we've gotten to a point where they are the ones calling for self-defense because people are dying, then that's a very bad place to be as a country. So what you're, go you you're going to have a situation where people who don't even agree with their reason for existence, any of these groups, would actually listen to their call for self-defense because they know that that's true. They say even a broken clock is right twice a day. So whether or not you agree with Masob or any of these people, they are not wrong in calling for self-defense um, self, um, self because the reality is the government has not done a good job in doing that. People are dying every day. It's too... And I, I think I agree with, with, um, with the gentleman on the phone. We've, we've become so numb to these things that it's right now, it just seems like it's numbers. So in the news today, you hear that um, gunmen attacked 30 people in Kaduna. Tomorrow, you hear that herdsmen killed 50 people in Jos. Um, the day after that, you hear that herdsmen attacked um, 20 people in a village. And if, if we're not careful, I think we're, we're, pro, we're pretty much there. The only thing we hear are the numbers. We're, not, we're forgetting the fact that these numbers are actually tied to human beings. And I think that desensitization is starting to eat deep into the system here. And that's, again, that's a bad place to be. So if these groups, these groups that in some cases have been proscribed, um, they have, uh, most Nigerians have their issues with them, if they're calling for this, and they're not wrong in calling for this, uh, what I hope, what I hope doesn't What's happen. What's the danger in mm. that when a group well, that is prescribed is, mm. is speaking to the minds of people who feel that they are not secured? Because Wouldn't that, you know, sort of sway people to their direction? Yeah, but so that's the worry because you start to, even people that don't take them seriously normally, when they are calling for something like this it makes them take a second look at, okay, maybe they're not all bad. Maybe they have a point. Maybe I should listen to what they're saying. And that's where, that's, and that's my point. That's where we shouldn't be. That's where we don't want to be as a country. All right, let me ask you, what should be the response of the governors in these regions that have been mentioned, the South, South and the South East, to this latest statement that people should defend themselves? 
So I think the issues, first of all, is beyond myself or IPOP or men or the Avengers, anything they call themselves. Uh, this, these are issues of governance we are dealing with. And my, my position has always been that the governor should begin to move towards state policing. Uh, the community policing as proposed by the federal government, some have argued it's just um, cosmetic, as it were, doesn't address the issues of policing. I'll give you an example. We don't have more than 100,000, maybe 110,000 military personnel. We barely have 302 or 310,000 policemen for a nation of over 200 million people having over 774 local governments. Uh, the number is just uh, is barely enough. And the police almost 60 to 70 percent of them are protecting private interests so the police themselves are straight and we can see clearly that the numbers are not there so the governors must show leadership and bring leadership to the table this is what the people are craving for so this is beyond mass of ipop and these other things uh, that we're, we're, we're talking Delta. about here all right uh, your, your, yeah. your, your final thoughts on this well, like I said, I think the government needs to, this is, it's, a, it's an accident waiting to happen. Where, where people start to get up to defend themselves because the government cannot, is not a place any country wants to be. Um, if you look all through history, it's never ended well. And that's my worry here. All right, I'm afraid that's where we have to stop. Thank you very much, Oyeka Chi Adekoya, security expert, for joining us via telephone. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And of course, Lululu, a pleasure always to have you Thank in you the studio. Yeah. All right, well, we'll take our plots reports now. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Stay with us. The proposed protection from internet falsehoods, manipulations and other related matters bill 2019, otherwise known as the social media bill, has received strong condemnation from stakeholders during the public hearing in Abuja. Several persons and groups express worry over the impact the bill will have on free speech, media houses, journalists and other online users if passed by the Senate. They urged lawmakers to discard the bill in the interest of democracy and free speech. I agree that matters of freedom of speech and inalienable rights of man are issues we should not compromise. I also agree that the right of an individual ends where the rights of another individual begins. The rub between the freedom of an individual and the limits of that individual is often a tight one to walk. As a people, however, we cannot stop discussing this freedom and its limitations for peace and harmony, growth and development. This public hearing underscores the importance attached to the process. On this note, it should be reiterated once more that as a deliberate and responsive Senate, we always pay attention to the fact that our efforts, our reports, are people-oriented and reflect the yearnings and aspirations of the citizenry in line with the present, with the best traditions of the National Assembly. It is pertinent to state there that one of the high points of this bill, in our view, is the myriad of reactions that trailed it from a cross-section of members of the public, both in the social media and other traditional media. We should be talking about how to fix our constitution through a referendum. Because if we have a constitution that is made for the people and by the people, there is no way, like the South Africans have after apartheid, that we'll have a bill like this standing at the people's building here in Abuja. It would never have been considered. And it would mean that some of the people who have this kind of outdated ideas would never have made it to even our Senate. That is the truth. The final thing I want to say is that this bill is dead. We are here to bury it. I'll keep it simple. Self-preservation is a very basic human instinct. In fact, our laws recognize self-defense to the point of justifiable homicide. 
This, of course, will be absolutely unnecessary. There would be no need for regional security operations or calls from all manners of groups, the citizens to defend themselves, if our federal government here in Nigeria will work harder and their work show that they have a genuine commitment to uphold a core constitutional obligation to defend the lives and property of the people. Thank you very much for watching. The program returns same time, same station. And until I see you again, please be well.